our third series coming up here as Invictus Gaming take on VG Gaming. I'm Julian, Patreon Time Card, joined by Jake Sports Tiberi. It is Danny versus Kakao Spawn. Yeah, but in China this time round, what an exciting series coming up. Two of the premier junglers in the world, maybe number one and number two, and this will be very close, I think. Yeah, and I think the cool thing here is that we've got very different styles between these two as well. Dandy, that big control reactionary counter ganking sort of jungler, and Kakao known for all out aggression. Yeah, exactly right. Kakao, one of the few carry junglers left, willing to pick up a lot of damage items, really punch through there. It is a former KT style. We see Insect doing it a lot as well, but Dandy and Mata are really known for their vision and control over a map, so they look to shut people down in a completely different way, and it will be like a really smart tactician going against a Brute Force Giant. Yeah, there's a lot of lot to love about this matchup. Now, Vici so far in their LPL performances kind of have mixed results. Mata and Dandy seem to be picking up a little bit more and getting some wins under the team's belt, but they just haven't got the same synergy yet. They're just still developing as a team, it seems like. Yeah, they're really on opposite sides at the moment. IG, one of the last undefeated teams. If they go 2-0 here, they join OMG as the last two that have really had, I guess, four series of the clean sweep. But Vici on the other side, they're 1-5, and, and they even split with Gamti this week, so they haven't looked terrific. They've had moments of brilliance, but they're still yet to pull it together in that team synergy. Yeah, we'll talk about IG. Their record is amazing so far. I mean, a lot of people looked at this team and said, you know what? We've got some Koreans in here. Pretty much feels like a strict upgrade in most of the positions, and so far that's been true, but we haven't seen save play yet. Or the tie. There's two stars, or the former star of IG and that top lane star as well, just haven't been needed. Yeah, and I think the reason behind that is because they've got good solid carries in the other positions, so they're leaning towards a more supportive role top laner in Pokemon, who has definitely carried his weight through in this one. Um, the surprise, though, is the tie not being played yet. He was the shot caller, and he has some of the most brilliant pocket picks we've seen. If anything, you feel if they drop a game one, they'll bring him in in game two just to change it up. Yeah, maybe. And we see LGD, of course, have two big names on their roster from Korea as well. Akon and Flame being interchanged for two very different styles. Oh, I just spotted something very nice in our lobby. It seems like we may have a debut here. Yeah, so it doesn't even look like they're going to wait to drop the first game. They've actually bought Zatai and save in for a little bit of a shake-up against Vici, and I like this move because Vici seem to be like those teams that want to take it off the risk and rift and beat you before they even get in through strategy. So show them something that you haven't done yet and maybe throw them through a loop. Yeah, but very important to note this because this is going to make IG play very differently, potentially. They've played a pretty broad range of strategies, still erring on the side of aggression, but haven't gone super all out. Rookies played very reserved and clean, really just elegant League of Legends, but Zatai, he's all about brute forcing stuff down. Yeah, and Save kind of follows a similar memo in the top lane as well, likes to go all out with that aggression, so I think that whilst they were waiting for Cow Cow to make the first move generally, and he was getting rookie ahead in a lot of these games, look for them to completely swip, swap that up and get uh, everyone onto just some brute force aggression. Yeah, and that's a change of shot callers as well, potentially Zatai, their old shot caller Kakao, obviously doing a lot of that work with rookie, but we're going to see how much Zatai changed it, not just on the rift, but kind of off in the as well, so lots to be excited about. But finally, save the carry top laner and Zatai. The just balls to the wall aggressive man is going to be back where he belongs in the mid lane. Yeah, certainly. So uh, I will be looking to see how they draft with the two new members because obviously we haven't seen it yet. I feel the last point we do have to jump towards before we get on the rift is a. Uh, Kid and Kitties are having a pretty stellar performance, whereas Vasily and Mata haven't really shown much in their duo lane yet. Uh, just a little bit of a stat for you. In the six games they've played so far, Kid is 45 kills and three deaths. Yeah, Kid's been playing fantastic. It's still the rest of RG, but we're going to jump in our first champ select here in our best of two. RG on the blue side here for game one. Vici on the right. And looks like Rek'Sai has already been banned out there by Vici. Yeah, it looks like maybe a misband on IG's side as well, so we'll have to find out whether that was due to a referee infringement or maybe just missing the first ban. We'll have to see, but Victus Gaming going to get another ban here unless, again, there's some more issues. But we'll see what happens and how it develops. And Victus Gaming may have actually just had a penalty. They're going to wait through quite a few bans or Zatai has cooked up something crazy. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised if it was a ladder there. Zatai definitely known to take some unique things onto the rift. Uh, Rek'Sai being taken away is very standard. Definitely one of the top junglers at the moment. You don't want to give it to a carry jungler like Kakao. We saw Loveland do complete work with it when he got Rek'Sai and was able to build a couple of damage items through. They're just tearing through the back line. Yeah, Siv are going to get banned out there as well. Rek'Sai is just such a strong champion. I mean... In the hands of any jungler, just feels so strong. Whether it's you know the aggressive counter jungling of Beast, the general pressure of Kakao, or even the more reserved herbivore-esque 
style of clear love. Every jungler that touches it seems to have a lot of success. Yeah, it definitely does. Siva being taken away from Kid here. He has preferred the Tristana and the Corky so far, but definitely something that you want to take off the board just because of how aggressive they will play with the tie and save. Don't want to give them that burst of speed to start things up even easier. Yeah, and Kid has also played Siva. It's a fantastic event. His CS has been phenomenal in his lane. He's hit 100, 110 minutes so many times already on that champion, so very strong. And I have a specific feeling IGA cooking something up here because they're just letting these bands fall away. Yeah, so no bands on the side of IG. VG obviously waiting on their third band. I think that you have to take Nara away. Save will just happily farm away, become an absolute monster and take over the game if he is given the opportunity on a champion like that. But there's so many things still up. You have to respect a couple of the assassins in the mid lane as well. I mean, you talk about mid lane, that's the Tide's favorite place. He's got a huge champion pool that he can draw from. Maybe he's like, you know what? Don't want to face any bans. Just want my champions to be open. We'll see. And Nazir is actually going to be the last band here from Vici. And now Invictus Gaming have a very wide pool of champions to pick from. Yeah, there is so much left up. Like all of the champ uh, jungle champions, Lissandra is up, Nas up. Jarv and I wouldn't be surprised to see if Yakao takes that one away. There, there is just an ocean out there that they can fit. And that's what happens when you just casually miss three bands. Again, not sure of coincidence or design here for Invictus Gaming, but a very interesting draft here. Jarvan will be their first pick. Yeah, so taking that away from Dandy, A is key because it is definitely one of Dandy's better jungles. And it also keeps your uh, champion pool nice and broad because he is that flex pick, can be taken into the top lane. The or the mid lane. Or oh, the mid lane, yeah, definitely. The danger here, though, is they give up a Lissandra and Nar convo that we've just seen have devastating effect. Yeah, they're going to deny the Narvan, though. It looks like Vici actually considering Janna, but we'll see what they want to go for. There's been a lot of uh, priority picks, actually, in China. You know, we talk about the four strong champions that oh, everyone sort of plays and bans out, but there's a lot of other options that have started rising to the top as well. In particular, the hover there for Vici Cassidy has seen an unbelievable amount of play in the LPL. Yeah, and Hotong plays it very, very well. He's played, I think, three games straight on Assassins. Now make this the fourth, taking the Cassidy into the mid lane. If that is where it does go, can go into the top lane as well. So I like the ambiguity of the first two picks coming out from Vici. Yeah, and I love Jonathan Mata as well. Just seems to be his best champion in the sense that it enables him to do everything that he wants. He can be mobile and warm around and get vision and really control fights. He's just a phenomenal Janna player. Yeah, and Janna does a lot with very few resources, and because of the amount of gold that Mata pumps into helping his team out, he is able to just go completely support style. As we see, wow, straight away, Nami and Tristana being locked in for IG. So that's a very... Very obvious plan now. Kid gonna take one of those hyper carries more. Not gonna go away from the Siva. Obviously was banned here. But Tristana, Tristana Nami, a great late game combo. And Kid feeling confident there on his AD carry. Yeah, and that's more of a counter pick away from Vasily. Definitely Vasily's uh, strongest AD carry at this point. Although it does leave it up. I was going to say for a Corky who can pick on. Caitlyn does the exact same thing in lane. Just bullies that Tristana around early game. And we've seen a lot of earlier AD picks being punished quite a bit in the LPL, and I think that just has to do with the depth of the bottom lane and the AD carry players here in the region. There are so many good players. There is Lee Sina Caitlin, like Vichu hovering there, and we'll go in here. Last few picks for IG. So curious to see what they go with. Yeah, I like the fact that Kitty's picked up Nami in this Tristana lane, purely for the reason that they do get bullied around a little bit early and will be able to keep them nice and healthy. As double AP looks to be coming out here, a lot of zone control out of Syndra and... Uh, Rumble that with the Cataclysm being able to lock people down, definitely a possibility. Yeah, we'll see again plenty of options here coming through. There's a chance to tie. We don't just play something a bit more standard, but we'll see what he wants to go for. The man has done crazy things before, but we'll see what he wants. Again, a player that really wants his comfort picks, wants to play the champions he feels comfortable on. Whether that's something standard or something really off the wall, we'll have to see. But it is going to be Nather and the Zerath. And that is a terrifying team comp coming out of IG at this point. Their mid-late game team fighting is absolutely massive and they have the ability to stall for days with that Zareth pickup. Nari is just going to, as I said, continue to get bigger and bigger and against a free lane like a Rumble, not going to be bullied around whatsoever. And it's interesting that Nar fell so late in this draft, but I guess Kassadin is just more of a priority. Johnny gets contested as well. And it looks like they wanted to last pick or counter pick the top lane here because they could have left Vasily's counter pick open there as well. Yeah, and a lot of pressure now on uh, Mata as well as Dandy to be able to get this Nar out of the middle of their team. They've got the two disengaged spells, so we'll be able to put in some work. But if they ever muck up a cooldown right here, that is a devastating Nar Jarvan in the middle of your team fight is huge. Yeah, and kind of interesting to see that despite IG just not having three bands for whatever reason it was, the draft actually proceeded fairly normally. It's just that Invictus Gaming seemed to have ended up with 
more powerful picks. It kind of depends what you consider powerful based on the team strength and the meta, but I do have a lot open. In fact, both teams, given again, we have 50% of the bands just not in there. A lot has changed here. There's a lot of power in these team comps. Yeah, and the the su most surprising lane for me is the bottom lane. Going for a Jana Caitlyn lane is uh, very safe on the side of uh, uh, Vici Gaming. I think that they need to, I guess, try and bully out this Tristana early, which they will be able to do, but I feel that they get impacted by ganks a lot more than what Tristana will because she is very highly mobile. Yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, we've seen a lot of Trist do well here. Kid is a phenomenal AD character player, and he's been playing excellently with his team and just on his own as well as far as individual plays. So, Curious to see how that goes out, but a lot of mid-game pressure potentially from VG's comp as well. Oh uh, yeah, they definitely do, and if they can put together a couple of nice team fights around this Rumble Ultimate early, it will delay the power spikes of both Na and Tristana. They just won't be able to get enough damage and tanky enough to be able to live through all the AoE that will go through. But as I said, that that's a lot of things falling into a perfect place, whereas it's a much easier team comp to pull off on the side of uh, IG, you feel, just because of uh, how... Well, uh, Kakao will play on Jarvan. All right, well, guys, we'll take a quick break, but we'll be back right away for VG versus IG. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome here to our third series here for day three of the LPL. Week two, we are in here, and it's been a fantastic week of League of Legends. Invictus Gaming are on the left here, looking to continue their undefeated record so far, and Vici would love to pick up a few more points as well. Yeah, definitely looking for Vici to try and get back into this. They have had a disappointing start, and if they want to turn it around, now would be the time to do it against a very impressive IG lineup, and so far... No one doing anything funny, Pastry Time. Everyone's just fanning out, apart from maybe carrying the top lane, hiding in that lane, bro. And we did have a really curious draft spawn, and I'm curious as your thoughts. IG just decided not to get, not to ban any champions, and we, as a result, we have a lot of power picks sort of left uh, in team comps here. Who do you think just has the better comp, just based on the picks we got? Yeah, I think based on the picks we have, IG has definitely outdrafted Vici here. I think that they've just got a much easier composition to pull together with that Nar Jarvan and all the long-range damage that comes through from Zatai and Kid. Um, they also have a couple of disengaged tools themselves. So overall, I think that Vici's comp is much more difficult to get ahead and stay ahead. I'm super excited for Saves Nar as well. We've seen a ton of good Nar players here in China. And Save, this is his debut actually in the LPL, if I recall correctly. So he'll be looking to go real big on the big, tanky, super team fight oriented Nar. Yeah, this is definitely save, uh, Saves' debut. And... Uh, Pokemon's been playing in his stead, who we thought maybe wouldn't be able to perform as well, but he's definitely had a great opening uh, series, so putting uh, save in at this mo uh, point is, I guess, a bit of an unknown. Yeah, I mean, Pokemon's been a very uh, consistent player. He's a Maokai player, I believe, so he yep. played a lot of that champion. So, you know, still the engage, still the big tank for his team, but maybe not the flashy playmaking engage that IG wants. Save here, though, could potentially be more of the player in Zatai. This man's crazy, even though he's playing Xerath. Yeah, you have no idea what this guy is going to do. As we see Dandy starting actually on a buff, not on a small camp, so watch how quickly he flies around the jungle. That will increase the first bit of his speed, but will mean he's not as healthy. Yeah, potentially looking for a quick gank there as well. Not going to go for the level 2, but could look for a quick level 3 with the double buffs as well. And that's one of the, the great things about this patch on the jungle in general. There are so many good pathing options. Yeah, there certainly is, especially if you take a jungle like Lee Sin, who just stays extremely healthy with that safeguard Iron Will. As we see Kid getting aggressed on here by Mata and Vasily. Early roam actually coming out from uh, Kitty's uh, in this bottom lane. Yeah, just wanting to ward up near the back of the red buff, so wanting to keep things safe. Kid knows he's not getting any uh, CS anyway, so he's just going to wait for it to push in. Isn't really struggling. Does have explosive shot leveled up, so we'll kind of push a bit here, trying not to get too far pushed in, but for now we'll just struggle a little bit while Vasily and Mata push him in. Ooh, near, just missing that pilt over Peacemaker. That would have been a nice chunk of damage that would come through. Um, the reason I don't really agree with the bottom lane so much on Vici's side is that not because they won't win their lane. I expect them to absolutely crush this lane early on. It's just that against a Xerath, they're going to find a lot of difficulty roaming around the map and taking turrets. So even if they take the first turret, Tristana can just choose to freeze, and there is a lot of wave clear that that can come out of uh, Zatai Zerath in the mid lane. Yeah, and Zatai are off to a good start actually against Kaz, and this is kind of an interesting mid lane matchup as well. We've seen a lot of Zerath today, especially against Zazir, but how is he expected to go against this Kassadin? Yeah, uh, the long range poke does get annoying, but Kassadin sustains through magic damage better than any other mage in the game, so he'll be completely fine as, say, starting to bully a little bit. I expect uh, both uh, mid laners just to be able to farm up at will. Yep, safe here again. 
Going to go into another very familiar matchup to us. Hey, Kakao actually is super low in his own jungle. Maybe he had to back off his Krugs there, but I think he'll be okay. Yeah, went for the full clear there, pace through time. Was able to pick it up. He's level four reasonably early at four minutes in the game, so he's done a whole clear off two potions. That's nice work out of Kakao. Makes sense why uh, there was a nice aggressive forward ward by Kitties. Didn't want to poor Kakao get caught in his own jungle and get killed very easily by Dandy's Lee Sin. And again, we return back to the top. Nah versus Rumble. Um, this is a really balanced matchup, but it's we've seen a lot of it in the LPL. Yeah, and it's to the point where Nah bullies early on, but Rumble doesn't really care as long as he gets those couple of items. Dandy actually paying a visit. Top lane could swing it on its head, however. Yeah, going to go up here. Dandy goes in. Save bounces immediately out of the way. Good ward there. So we'll spot uh, Dandy coming through. And save will be very safe for now. Tong there. Going to take some poke in the middle. There's also Ty just going in. <laughs> Wants to find melee range against Kassadin. Yeah, I think he was trying to get Kassadin to pull creep aggro there to take a little bit more damage. Kassadin able to kite back. So the Ty actually ends up losing that trade a little bit. And overall, this is just going to be a very back and forth mid lane. Yeah, the Ty is ahead on CS by a few so far. Kekau back in his jungle as well. We'll continue farming up. He does have the first part of his jungle item. So on the way, Dandy as well. Very similar, just a little bit behind in experience. Yeah, and a little bit of a curious pickup. If Kakao does want to put his jungle on farm the way he has, I'm surprised he hasn't gone for that Trailblazer. Um, just able to clear out camps a lot quicker as Jarvan. Obviously, the Chilling Smite will help to land skill shots early, however. Yeah, just wants to have a bit more gank pressure, but had a nice full path. I mean, if you can take the farm, you might as well. Level 2 ganking is a good option to explore, but we haven't seen that many junglers take advantage of it yet. Well, it's just a very Kakao style of play. He does like to get ahead on farm early on, and he does look for precise moments to gank. So whilst we say that he is willing to affect lands, he definitely is more of a team fight, try and be a carry for his team. Yeah, and that fits very well into the Chinese jungling style. Kakao's brought a lot to his team already. Level 5 now on this Java, looking to maybe get a quick 6 and go into a lane for a gank. He's actually going to approach the mid lane here, but we'll just back off and look to get a bit more vision down. Yeah, picks the true side up off the Raptor, so we'll be able to spot this ward out. No, that's actually his ward, so he's got complete vision over the, I guess, Bottom side of this mid lane. Yeah, it's a tie going in aggressive. Maybe expecting to counter kick. Good stun actually and great pressure. Now out of mana though. He actually riff walks in. Now Kakao's going to come in. Dandy right behind him though. There for the counter gank. Yeah, so Dandy using his time well to stick around in this mid lane. True sight going off there. We'll be able to spit, uh, spot the uh, ward. I think that's what Zatai was trying to do, show himself with no mana and get Kassadin to Rift walk in. However, just not enough follow-up coming through. Yeah, kind of a hard kill to get as Vasily down the bottom takes a big damage trade. Actually, Mata going back in. Good double knock-up on Tornado and just a trade back and forth. But I think Tristana won that. Yeah, definitely did, especially because they have the sustain in the lane. That shield will be uh, useful in short uh, trades, but overall the sustain just comes out king in this matchup. And Vasily needs to be careful right now. So does Mata. They're very far up. Well, there's actually junglers down here as well. So this is getting real hairy potentially. Danny again really mirroring Kakao well here in this particular early jungle matchup. But Kid and Kitties will just hang out here, CS as best they can. And Kid, a little bit behind on CS, but more than happy with how the lane's developing. Yeah, as long as he doesn't continue to get shoved in, he's been able to push back reasonably well. Uh, he will be okay. I like the back coming out of Vasily here. We actually saw the same matchup earlier today, and it didn't go so well because Caitlyn just held on to too much gold. Going back as soon as you have that BF means that you can bully so much further. Yeah, and Kid now also going to go back and might have BF, but I don't know if he wants to go for strictly that item at this point in the game. So he's still returning, returning with a nice pass, but Kid answers in kind. Yeah, so we've seen a couple of different builds come out of uh, Tristana's uh, at this point. But going for the Infinity Edge, I expect a Static Shift to come through after the BF Sword, just for a little bit more mid-game power. Um, but we would not be surprised if he did rush that one through. The tie bullying Hatong's Kassadin, by the way. 20 CS ahead right now, looking to get himself a blue buff and continue the trend here in the mid lane. Got his components from Morello Nomicon as well, so on his way, well well on his way to that, excuse me. I like the pink water as well, defending the blue buff. The tie really wants to keep this one. Yeah, definitely wants to pick it up so he can continue to spam his spell. The thing that surprised me about this matchup so far is how liberally Zatai is willing to push the lane with his skills. Does not ma matter if he's looking to harass, just wants to shove it as quickly as possible. Yeah, and I think you can tell why Kakao has been in his lane so frequently, or at least around it, wanting to protect Zatai. He's playing very aggressively, and even though the champions are very similar uh, in terms of the players that they're subbing in here, you know, we've seen now, we've seen Zerath already in the LPL. Uh, Zatai's style is just very different to rookies. Yeah, it certainly is. Rookie more of that control waits for Kakao to make the play. Zatai does 
doesn't look like he's waiting for anyone. A nice deep ward was placed down by Hatong on the Wraith camp uh, in that brush to try and spot out some of Kakao's movements um, just to get the early tell because with how aggressively they're playing, they can't afford to be counter ganked if they do go in on Zatai. But for all of Zatai's aggressive posturing as well, the early ward control from Invictus Gaming has been impeccable. So many wards up around the river and Dragon Area just really spotting out and keeping Zatai safe. Yeah, it definitely is. So... Look to see, uh, actually, Lee Sin going into the mid lane for a gank. Yeah, he wants to get in now. Sick of the Tai's aggressive play. He's going to go low here, and Hatong will pick up first blood. Yeah, and that's really important. That's where that ward really came into effect, because Dandy knew he wasn't being counter ganked there, so was able to go in, get a nice flank and a uh, Dragon Rage kick. Did have to use his flash, but picks up the first blood for his mid laner. Yeah, and I guess the Tai a little too aggressive there. Kakao not able to cover him that time. Dandy will find a pink with her tongue as well. And looks like top lane, actually, was getting aggressed on both of the Invictus Gaming soul laners, actually pushing very hard in their lanes. Yeah, and that's the thing. Even though they picked up the kill, the CS advantage still is in the way of Zatai, so he'll be happy to continue to put pressure on the map and continue to push out because of how well their late game is. If he's the one taking all of the... Wow, nice chunk. Yeah, Kid taking a lot of damage. Does chuck his potion. Kid is, will keep him up with the ebb and flow as well, but that trade uh, did now went in favor of Vasily. Yeah, it certainly did. Vasily also just looking to back away now off the turret, so... Just getting down as much upfront damage as he can, and they'll just continue to push this lane. 14 CS advantage, so he's still going well. And one of the nice, like, after effects, I think, of all of the hard pushing from mid and top is actually Kid and Kitties must feel very safe in the bottom lane. Yeah, and that's what I was going to touch on. I think it's more towards their team uh, tactic that if they can stay relatively easy, even it's only about 500 gold at this point, they feel that they scale through and have a better team fight comp. So as long as Dandy isn't really shutting down a lane, the rest of the team will definitely do well. Yeah, Kakano actually down the bottom, influencing the one lane he knows he can. We'll just clear out a ward though down the bottom, and Kid and Kitties will reset and continue farming. Yeah, so as long as this goes relatively equal, they're definitely happy to do that. It's still only 14 CS. In the top lane, Save has built himself a little bit of a lead, so I think that will be where Dandy tries to influence next. Yeah, Dandy's actually waiting in, looking for a lane gank now. We'll now rotate in up around the river and potentially look in there. There is a ward, I believe, going to spot Dan if he goes that way, but he's going to back off. Actually looking for the blue buff, it seems like, maybe wanting to get some wards down. Yeah, I think he's looking for that pink ward. They might know that it's there, so uh, is going in there to sweep that one out because he spotted Kakao on the bottom side of the map. So very good vision control from Dandy, able to pick up a free 100 gold ward for himself. Yeah, going to maybe take out the Grump here as well, even a bit of extra farm coming in there as well. We'll actually just smack the Grump there with the smite. And it falls very quickly. Does have the warrior chat and does Dandy. So uh, early damage is picking up now on Lee Sin. Yeah, it certainly is. And this is the point of the game where Lee Sin shines. He does so much burst damage out of that dragon range and resignating strike. So we'll look to affect the map with some nice heavy ganks at this point. Saves build, if that is going into a uh, phage, is one of the more aggressive uh, builds that we see out of Nara at this point as a actually just clears out the wave in the top lane. Yeah, really smart play from Carry actually. Just uses his ult. I've seen Flandre do this quite a bit, actually. And so he'll just kind of clear things out and be safe. But still, actually, low on the bottom lane, that trade seemed to go all the way for IG there. Yeah, did have to use that. No, he didn't use Buster Shot on that time round. So Vasily just being chunked out. They're both going back to shop. So that lane's starting to swing back. They'll pick up the CS advantage here nearly. Yeah, Kid and Kitty's looking good here. And again, a very... Uh, defensive but very powerful late game bottom lane here, so that's very nice here. And yeah, we're going to even up that CS facility. It was maybe 10 ahead at one point, and we'll fall to even now as they push this wave in as well. And the AD carries reset. But what I wanted to mention, Carry just kind of knew that he was going to get dove by save potentially, even though he didn't know Kakao was hiding in the Baron pit trying to get in. So smartly uses the ult and just backs off. Yeah, definitely good play. Heads up there. Recognize that maybe wouldn't need the equalizer unless something funny happened around Dragon right now. So. Happy to clear that one out. He's gone back and picked up his Haunting Guys as well as the Seeker's Arm Guard. So he's looking very well poised for the next team fight. Yeah, when we talk about Rumble being so item efficient. Really doesn't need too much to start things off in his early game. And Carry has a decent lane here actually evening up that CS a bit more. Save still about 10 ahead, but not a massive lead that we might uh, potentially expect in a matchup where he can get bullied a little bit more. Morelli Normacon finished up now as well for the tie, and the Rod of Age is done for Hatong, so items going well across the board. Yeah, but this is the point where Zatai can maybe abuse a little bit of an item spike because of the fact that that Rowit does have to stack up. So maybe look for Kakao to get into that middle lane, try and lock this Kassadin down after an offensive Rift Walk. But a very uh, slow-paced, early-game pastry time, and you'd have to think this plays into a IG's uh, favor. Certainly feels like it does. I mean, they've got the Tristana. They picked, again, a very defensive, late-game-oriented bottom lane. And Kid is just comfortably farming at this point. Still, you know, maybe 10 CS behind me. He's even got an Avarice Blade building into that shiv. Actually, it's a spare crit cloak, weirdly enough. So just being very greedy with the build. 
Yeah, and this is something we saw a lot from Uzi in the World Championship. If he goes back and gets a second component, it generally is a crit cloak, just relying on that one free auto attack that could turn a dragon fight around. So good pickup coming through uh, from Kid here, trying to get a little bit of an advantage. And bit of a dive going on. Yeah, actually, that's trouble. Hatong picks up Kakao. That Kid is now going to get chased down. He's in trouble. Great stun. A good bubble as well. Hits both. And there's a tidal wave following through. The teleport also coming in for save, who does not have Mega Nile left. He's going to go in onto Mata, but he's 1v3 right now. Caitlyn also rotating in. Kid not quite there yet either. Save should be able to get away here. Now Vasily's found him as well. 4v1. Save could get dove here. And two free kills there. Vici happy there. That was a very bad teleport coming out of save there. None of his Naba up anywhere near that transform and just wasn't able to affect it. This will mean that the Dragon will go over to VG. So all of a sudden, they've flipped the early game on its head, picked up another couple of kills, and able to pick up the first Dragon. And now the lead really starting to come in for VG. It's been, again, like we said, a kind of a slow early game, but those are the sorts of things that Invictus Gaming don't really want to give away. And maybe it's the synergy they haven't quite gotten yet. They've not played with Save and Zatai yet. Things looking a little rusty for IG. Yeah, that looked like an outright miscommunication because there was nothing Save could do to impact that teleport. Will also look like Vichy will be able to pick up a blue buff, although the collapse is coming. Yeah, it looks like they are going to come through. Dandy will steal it away. Kakao actually going to find Hatong. Good equalizer coming down as well. Kakao going to get out. Now Mata going to flank them. Good double knockout. Great flash. Jana ultimate now. Zatai will flash out as well. But Kitties goes down. Kakao so low as well. Has to be careful. And that was a beautiful kill coming out. Yeah, what a play out of Mata. Able to get three of the members back into the jungle. They had to burn all of their flashes to get out of that. A great equalizer from Carrion. It's so dangerous to fight a Rumble anywhere near these choke points. Throw in a Jaina and it's an absolute suicide mission. Yeah, so just the haunting guys alone looking good there. Dandy really influencing the game early for his team. And uh, things just going well here for Vici. Again, a team that looked a little out of sorts in their early games. Looking real tight here in the first 16 minutes. Yeah, and the, all of the... Uh, as we see a replay of what happens here. So they go in and they take away the blue buff. And all of a sudden, Hatong slows all of the members. That equalizer just means they have no escape pass and Mata with the nice ultimate, gets everyone back into range and they're just able to clean this one up. Yeah, really, really heads up play there from Mata. Again, one of the few Jonah plays that can make plays. Actually, looks like in the top actually save. Getting aggressed up by Danny. Dodges the Q carry in there as well. Almost get the kill there, does Nah, but Rumble will back away. Her tongue is very low somewhere as well, but he's going back to base. Yeah, so... Uh Save actually used his ultimate there and tried to aggress onto carry. Luckily, Dandy was in the top lane, able to turn that one around. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Zatai used his ultimate as well, trying to chunk out Hatong, who's 3-0-1, has a needlessly large rod on top of that uh, roll. So any stacking that needed to be done is already well and truly ahead. Yeah, Kassadin looking good now. Still slightly behind in CS, but at 3 0 one, that's a fantastic way to start things is your Kassadin, given that you do expect a bit of a power trough now. Vasily finished up his Infinity Edge. Looks like Zeal is done for Kit as well. So on his way to his static chair, but hasn't quite done it yet. And now Invictus Gaming going to have to really dig in deep because they've got a couple minutes of power trough to wade through. Yeah, actually it looks like an Infinity Edge was picked up for Kid. Otherwise, so he used that refund feature to pick up that big damage item looking to get further ahead. He's got about 155 damage on that Avarice Blade as well. So that's stacking up nicely, putting him a little bit further ahead. Yeah, kind of interesting coming out there from Kid going for the much more aggressive choice down the bottom. Vasily and Mata going to be able to take out that tower. I'm just checking here. Yeah, looks like yes, what, uh, did max out the explosion. Oh, sorry, was checking off the tie. He'll be in trouble. Dandy going to dive in, but he'll be okay. Yeah, definitely able to get away from that one. As you are about to say, so he's maxed the explosive shot, then moving into the rapid fire. So put all five points in there to try and get ahead in that lane. He has fallen about 18 CS behind, but you'd say that is a win, even though his turret has gone down. It is 18 minutes in the game. And we mentioned how difficult this siege is going to be out of Vici, trying to push in a... Uh, Zareth at this point in the game is just not going to be possible. No, and Tatai just happily cleaning out creeps now. Going to pad that CS lead a bit more. Looks like a Rabadon's death camp might be up for Zatai, who's never one to shy away from an aggressive item. No, definitely not. I would have expected a little bit earlier boots two out as well, just because of the fact that there are some hyper mobile carries on the other end. As we take another look in this top lane, say finally starting to get further ahead. Has picked up about a 20 CS advantage, so starting to push his favorable lane match. And I guess the thing for IG is that they haven't really been able to get super far ahead in these lanes with Kakao pressure. Have lost the first dragon, but haven't had a big team fight yet. So maybe save the, with his items building up, are going to be able to influence the next dragon fight. But the top lane looks like there's a party brewing with Dandy hanging out yet again here. Yeah, looking to try and catch Save out, being over-aggressive. Has timed the Nabar nicely, so if Save does want to go aggressive here, will be caught out. He's going to go in. 
Oh, never mind. Your cow down the bottom actually maybe going to go in there instead. Hey, Tong has actually followed down here as well. And save will bounce out. Dandy has found it. That's a good Nar ultimate back and an equalizer. Going to be a bit of a misfire there. Yeah, that was a great Nar just at the very end, not allowing Dandy to do anything to get behind for that kick. Has backed so far away from the turret as well, recognizing that Mata could be in the area. Yeah, Jana is there as well. Actually going to zone off Satai a little bit. The blue buff is gone. That looks like it was might have been stolen away. But Satai will clean out the little minions and... Get that timer going. Mata very aggressively warding here. This is more of the VG I think I expected to see. Yeah, much crisper match, map movements. Recognizing there's a Zerith in the mid lane. So go top, take that out of turret first. Get yourself a little bit of an advantage and then try and push it. A minute until Dragon. So you would expect them to start moving their uh, ward of lines down to that area of the map. As you see Mata walking across a couple of pinks. So looks like they're in a good position to defend that uh, area of the map. Yeah, we always talk about the utility duo here of Vici, Dandy and Mata of being people that just love to really prepare objectives minutes in advance so they have all the vision. And we can see a little bit of that coming out now. But IG have good defensive wards as well, but haven't quite been able to creep out forward. Yeah, and good back timings come out and coming out of IG mean they will be as strong as possible for this fight. I think if they're able to dodge out the majority of an equalizer that will come through from carry, they're in a good position. But Hatong is definitely the man to watch in this next fight. He's come up with about 1,500 gold in his pocket at the moment. So if he can get back and buy... He'll be in a very big place to carry. Yeah, there's actually quite a lot of gold on Vici's side to spend before this dragon fight, and they should just have enough time here. Might be about 15 seconds late if they recall now. But carry, he's pretty scary. Level 13, uh, 12, sorry, so has level 2 ultimate ready to go. And we might see our first big team fight here in Victus Gaming. This will be a big test for them with their new ish lineup. Yeah, it certainly will be. We get to see if the coordination is going to be an ongoing issue. We already saw that the one misplay from that teleport. So they need to, they've pulled all their members down, not willing to risk it a second time Well, it, time round, even with the teleport. So looking to get in there much cleaner this time. The tie with this need to see large rod though. Is that not quite at the death cap, but everyone on IG has spent their money and they've got big power spikes coming in for this fight. So committing a lot here to try and go in. Save going to build rage up now as well. Vision will be cleaned up. Vasily just going to poke them back as well. And Hatong is actually going to go in, it looks like. Save there on the back. It'll go into Mega Nerf Bomb, but he does get knocked up. Dandy around the side, going to flank as well. Hatong going straight in there as the tidal wave does come through on the three. But Kid now in a good spot. Great Zonia's used to joke. Kid kind of getting close in here. Has to be careful. Just gets eaten though by Carries. Rumble overheated. And Save is forced to flash. That's one kill. Free there for Vici. Make it two. Yeah, Vasily able to pick up Kakao off the back of that. Save was able to tank a lot of that as the tie going so low. Um, but in the end, that Kassadin is just absolutely massive. Having that uh, Zonya's Hourglass pay dividends in that team fight, really swung it around. That's a second dragon. Yeah, really nice teamwork there from Vici. Getting it together. Carry just destroyed Kido. Had nowhere to go. With, I think, Jarvan Cataclysm maybe getting in the way. And IG just not quite the same team. Let's watch it again, though. Yeah, so we take another look. Hatongo's in very deep here. And Save looks like he has a good transform. Gets a nice nah, but that uh, pressure that's just coming through. And it's a pretty poor Cataclysm, to be honest. Trapping people uh, on the wrong side. For, and yeah, Kid just gets absolutely exploded. So a little bit of a messed up from Kakao there, leaving his AD carry on the wrong side. And they were lucky to not lose the tie here. Yeah, I mean, that fight could have gone much worse, I guess, is the good news for IG. But they are falling behind quite a bit in gold. Looks like about 5,000 gold between these two. And Vici just looking very crisp. I mean, we talked about it. It's going to take a while for Dandy and Mata to get used to their new solo laners. But everyone's playing a lot better. Hotong, Carry, and Vasily now playing probably significantly better than their week one performance. Yeah, and Dandy really having his way in this jungle matchup so far. 0-2 and 0. Starved Kakao out with some good map movements to just stop the ganks early. And I think that's really playing on... Uh, Dandy, uh, Kakao's mind as this game goes on. Yeah, I mean, Kakao loves to get in there aggressively, and he can't get these big, snowball-y, aggressive laners in Sabres and tie. you know, maybe uh, the pressure that they want here. So, I mean, Kid's doing fine. He's probably the saving grace of this team, but even he's behind now as well. Yeah, he started to fall further behind in the part of the matchup where you would expect him to at least start going even with the two items being picked up. Vasily picked up a kill in that last fight as well, so that's put him in a very nice place on this Caitlyn. Yeah, shift done for Caitlyn there as well. Save will transform here. Got a Banshee's Veil done up for now, so we'll be a bit better here, but save really just powering up a little bit more. And that's kind of the, the story here for IG in general. They need to get going a little bit more, and Vici getting more and more control on the map. 
Yeah, and I think the uh, real thing that's really good on Vici's side is that it's Hotong that's picking up a lot of the gold. And they need him to be the star carry in this. We've mentioned already that carry any gold he gets is a kind of bonus because he is so effective without items. Dandy doesn't need really anything apart from a little bit of tank stats. So if they can get as much gold onto Facili and uh, Hatong as possible, that does them well. And I, with the last team fight that we saw Vici play as well, we've seen this a lot actually with Kassadin based teams. You tend to play one tank, or in this case with Lee Sin, uh, just a jungler as your frontline and don't really have anything else, especially with the rumble here for the double AP. But Hatong has been so aggressive that he's acting like a frontliner in a lot of fights. Yeah, and it's because of the Zonya's pickup. He was able to get it a couple of minutes accelerated. We saw that the death cap only just came through for Zatai, so being able to pick that up allowed him to dive into the back line like he was that front line of that uh, team fight. Yep, and Victor's gaming have plenty of total potential as well. We've got Zatai's wave clue, and that'll be very good with the uh, death cap finished up. He just needs to find fun wherever it is safe, and it's up to Vici to press their advantage on the map. Yeah, it certainly is, and whilst they have this little bit of a power spike, they really need, really need to uh, ride it before this Tristana gets going. With the Death Cap being picked up for Zerath, he's in a very nice spot at this part of the game. Uh, does need to be careful that he doesn't get flanked though. He saves getting a lot of gold. Marta getting jumped onto Ty. Actually gets that first kill. Gonna throw out the ultimate as well. Kakao just poking. Dandy actually wants to go back in. Save. Great rage rendering here. Looking to jump in as Megana does go in there. The tidal wave follows in. Can he not carry back? He does get knocked up by Kakao. Goes back in, gets bubbled. Zonis is in mid-air. And looks to take someone out, but will go down. And Kitties went absolutely massive. Luckily, Carry was able to exchange that one. Vasily, wow! He's going in there. Kakao knocks him up. Kid over the top, wanting to go in as well. Hatonglo might be able to clean up, but there's the next kill. Resets now for Kid. There's another one going as well. That's three kills, actually, believe, for Kid. Gets the triple. Yeah, out of nowhere, IG able to turn that one of his head. And what a play out of Kitties. Just locking up that rumble for as long as possible. Really turned that team fight around, and Mata getting caught out like that, that is very not like him. Yeah, I mean, he's got the uh, Magi's as well, so he's going to lose a couple of stacks off that. And what a bo what bottom lane play here from IG. You know, the mid lane maybe not doing as well, top lane struggling a bit as well. Getting kitties, man, bringing it all the way in on that engage. Yeah, these guys are such an impressive bottom lane to be able to get to this point in the game against a really annoying matchup and now get three kills. That's two and a half thousand gold that Kid now has to spend. Go back finish off that static shift, maybe even go into another BF sword buy. And the scary thing to look at is that he's still 300 gold behind Caitlyn, so can't imagine what the gap looked like before. But yeah, he's going to be good. Got a BF sword and the shift now. Tristana really powering up for Invictus. Yeah, looking to push what should be now a big power spike. Put that Tidecaller's Blessing on top of that Tristana. And it's just going to be doing work. And we mentioned that Hatong needs to be the carry for his team. If you flip it on the reverse, this Tristana is... Earlier it gets going, the better off IG are going to be. Absolutely, and even Saves powering up. Almost got his Randuin's finish there as well. Blaster in there for the tag, moving in for the Void stuff. So the damage is starting to come out now for IG. And Vici lost a little bit of their map control. This next Dragon fight is going to be very key. Yeah, you feel that you, they need to wait out all the ultimates being back up. They're all back off cooldown now. Some of the key flashes are down, however. That's Dandies and Carry not going to be able to get onto Kit as easy as they did last fight. Yeah, we'll see here. The dragon is up in 40 seconds and they're trying to get vision around it. Dandy and Mata coming in. Kakao actually just will get out. Has to be careful. Equalizer already burnt. Kitty's in trouble. Dandy going to kick him in the face. Does go in there and Atong gets that first kill. Now Kakao getting chased down. A good stun doesn't quite land there. Vasily is actually getting aggressed on by Save. He went so deep in 1v4. There's two members dead already for IG. Hatong going to die back in on his side. That's a great zone. He's coming out as well. And Save just cutting in. But Kid's in a great position off around the Raptor camp. Look at the positioning out of Kid over the wall. Made sure that wasn't any worse. Two for one in the end for Vici with a great cash on to Kitty's this time around. But... They still might be able to defend this dragon. No, they've given it up. Sent Nar back to base. And great discipline from Vici as well to not chase and get killed because Kid could have gone big once again. And now they'll start their third dragon of the game. The ever-important third dragon just gets melted by Vici Gaming. Yeah, so that's three dragons to none still. A little bit behind on the dragon timer, so that won't be a big problem until about the 35 minutes into the game. Um, that's when Baron will become an issue as well, you feel, with both lineups. But... That was IG's fight to probably win at this point in the game. But Kitty's just got caught out. I think so too, and we always talk about contesting third dragon. I think the biggest issue hit on is the fact that, yeah, Baron's a much bigger objective now, and VG will happily trade the first dragon for their first Baron. Yeah, definitely will, and a little bit of 
I guess, confusion once again. It looks like they're just not on the same page a lot of this time. You saw once again, Save went in without his team and had to just wander out on the back of that team fight one more time. So Kakao and Kitties need to get on the same page as Save and really engage as a unit. Yeah, and you know, the items still coming through. IG are making good individual plays, but not quite again having the synergy that we saw from the starting squad in the first week and a bit of this weekend as well. Void stuff has been done for Zatai, so his damage is going to get better. And the locket's done for Kakao as well. Some good items starting to come through, but Vici still with a decent lead, about 5k still. Yeah, but the problem is that the two damage, uh, three damage threats, there's two APs and then there's Vasily. And Vasily is getting reasonably big, so they're investing a lot into these magic resist items, but it's only really save that can go anywhere near uh, Vasily in terms of armor. Yeah, and the thing, yeah, with uh, Kakao still needing to look for more tank stats as well, going to be a little while for him to get some extra gold. And no Lust Whisperers, some of the armor builds up, although I guess, again, very low tank lineup for Vici. They're more looking to just damage down the carries. Yeah, and Dandy's looking to use his mobility over raw tank stats. He's not going in unless he feels he can set something up for his team, as Kid aggresses on him. Kid is going real deep. He's got red buff, actually. We'll just clear out a couple wards with the help of Kid. He's going to take out the Scuttle Crab as well. But Kid is feeling himself. I think he knows he needs to carry his team a bit here in this game. Yeah, he's looking to get aggressive at this point. Now that he's nearly got that Bloodthirster as well, once he hits that item, you feel that he will look to take over. Yeah, good split push though here by Vici. Hatong and Mata down here. Mata does not have the captain enchant yet, but Hatong is already so mobile and Jana is so fast that it's pretty hard to catch these two. Yeah, and that's just good map movement. They're not punished whatsoever for rotating two members into the bottom lane and taking out a huge wave and a turret. Yeah, get still vision around Baron secure. Cured by Vici as well. Dandy almost got himself killed there by Kid, but managed to get the key vision. Save now down the bottom. Level 15 on this now. So getting big here. His team's giving him a lot of gold, but ID have not had one big coherent fight yet. Yeah, and the Leandre is now finished up for carry, so he's completely where he wants. Maybe a Void stuff to come in after this, but otherwise he's not going to get much stronger as this game goes on. So you feel that Vici needs to start making some definitive moves right now. Yeah, Vasily hits his third item as well. That last Whisper done and got a Vamp Scepter, which is very useful in some longer team fights. I think for IG, uh, I like that Kidis is building the Mikhails up as well. We've seen a lot of Locket plus Mikhails to protect these Hyper Carries, and that's going to help Kids so much in the fights where they really need to peel off all these threats. Yeah, it certainly will. Vici actually controlling both sides of the map reasonably well. We mentioned that Baron will start becoming a priority, and they've picked up the Scuttle Crab. They've got uh, Pink Wards all over the area, really scouted it out, so they're in a position to do good work here. Yep, defensive Pink Wards here for IG as well. You can kind of tell where the, uh, the line is here for both teams when all the Pink Wards are quite far back from IG, and Vici sit all of theirs in the neutral area along the river. And once again, they're not sending save to go answer the split push from Carry, preferring to leave him with the team. Maybe because of some of these communication issues. Yeah, I mean, again, they've not played with save. Um, Kakao will not likely not have as much experience playing with, say, him over Rookie, who they've been starting as well. So we'll see here, but save has definitely looked individually impressive. Still, still trying to go in and make plays. Just a matter of Invictus Gaming getting together and fighting as a unit. Yeah, and Hatong getting a lot of harass off as he riff walks over that wall. So. Finally, IG and managing to get a little bit of control over this barren area. We'll be able to go and clean out a lot of it. We just need to buy some time here. Tongue going in out to Kitty's Mata. Flash Tornadoes actually hits the tie. Good equalizer. Pops him down as well. And carry takes up Kitty's instantly safe in the middle of everyone as Kid is trying to find a target. But Hatong will just blow him up. Dodges the stuns as well with his zonies. And now they're going to chase on him to save. Dandy kicks him into a wall. And there's another kill. Two for zero VG. What a fantastic team fight. Once again, Mata pulling the trigger this time on a Jana deciding that it's his turn to engage. They're making a beeline straight for this Baron, and that's two kills for nothing, and possibly the Baron objective. And maybe my one criticism of Vici's team cult might have been engage, actually. They don't have that much hard engage, especially, but they're making it work with the tools they have, and they have so much control over the map. I mean, this ult going to come through for Zara. It's just going to be a bit annoying, but this Baron is going to VG. Yeah, it certainly is. Kakao might go for the save here. No, he's been zoned completely out, and now he's even dead. Yeah, Vasily just pops in there, just doing so much damage on Caitlyn. Baron goes to VG Gaming. Looking like a win. Yeah, they're looking in a terrific spot, and this is a completely different VG than we saw yesterday when they were playing Gamti. Completely on the same page, and their mid lane Hatong and uh, Vasily in particular have looked really on point. Yeah, and Kid here struggling a little bit. Probably has again more gold to go and spend. No, actually, a little bit gold stuff this time. Hasn't been able to uh, free from some of the empty lanes that are coming in. Actually, 60 CS behind Kid there as well. So, really, Tristana, we talk about her a lot as a late game carry, but she's more of a three item champion. Yeah, she definitely is that three item champion. Now that the Ranjuan's been picked up, maybe even make that a four item. Needs that last whisper to come through and. 
you think that they need to stall out for a little bit longer now that this has come through. Dragon 20 seconds away. If they're not able to pick that one up, they're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, and I said it looks like a win for Vici. They haven't won yet after that Baron, but they've got so many good options here. They're still very far ahead in gold, about 8,000 and counting for them. The Dragon's coming back up. That'll be their fourth in a row in, this ca in that instance as well. And we'll see what they want to do. They've got so much pressure. Yeah, this is looking like a complete shutout pastry time. Only the mid turret falling for IG. One turret to four. They haven't been able to pick up a dragon or a baron in this game. And this is the controlled playstyle that we expected out of Dandy and Mata when they came into this league. Yeah, and you know, maybe Vasily especially is a bit more aggressive of a player, but Vici are playing very controlled and very together. And it's looking great. Look at Mata as well. So far forward just to get vision. Yeah, extremely confident looking to get around with those... Uh, Moby Boots. I'm just checking quickly as well. Nine stacks actually, I believe, there for Mata. So Vendai is paying off a little as well. That, for, that to me signals a confident buy from Mata's Jana. Yeah, and all of a sudden, IG is stacking in a brush looking to catch someone out and it's just not working. They've got no answers for what Vici is doing in this game. I mean, it might be a bit desperate looking for IG, but I can tell you now that is the tie's this is the tie level shot calling is Gakao who are coming on to Mata who might look to reset. Dandy going in to tie gets eaten alive by her tongue and Dandy. And now in the back line as well. Mata getting aggressed on by save. Save does transform. Great form and up. Flashes over as well. She's going to bounce away, but Ace in the hole is just going to kill him. And that's three clean kills for Vici. Yeah, and you would think that would be the game right now. They've got the Baron minions streaming down the middle, middle lane. They'll meet up with that massive wave. And IG have looked in shambles this game. Kid just not able to get close enough because of all the threats coming out of Vici to really affect any of these yeah, fights. Yeah, Hatong casted in here is just so good against all these hyper carries. Even a fairly mobile one with Tristana that does have a decent reposition tool. You just can't get away from a cast and if no one can deal with the cast, everyone else is fighting well. Your carry's just never going to impact the fights the way you want them to. Yeah, and not deciding to end here, they get sent Dante to prep the top lane, so they pick up another turret for themselves. There was actually a lot of time still on the carries from IG, maybe underestimating how much damage Vasily really does at this point in the game. He's 70 CS ahead and a full item. Yeah, just looking so strong for Adam Caitlin now done as well. Vici are well and truly 10,000 gold ahead here in this game, just starving IG of control of the map. There's no objectives, basically no wards left for IG either. And this is exactly, again, what we expect from Dandy and Mata. Very controlled, very strategic play, and everyone on their team is pulling off. Yeah, certainly are, and really impressive play out of the top laner as Dandy goes in one more time on yeah, Kakao. On Kakao just really trying to be a nuisance here. Carry going to come in as well, save that, going to build up rage. Mata now coming in, that's going to force Kakao to flash out. Dandy goes back in, oh, that was almost a beautiful kill. But now save in the back, just going to run defense. Vici almost showing off now. Yeah, and the difference between a team that looks like they're struggling in communication compared to a team that is throwing out ultimates at the perfect unison trying to pick up kills. Vici are looking um, really, really good. Yeah, and you know, this is what we expected here of this team. Now, my question, if they win this game, are they going to look exactly the same in, in the second game as they play, especially if IG go back to their starting roster and sub back in uh, kick out, uh, Pokemon and Rookie? Yeah, I think they definitely have to go back to the starting roster. It just looks like the communication isn't really there at the moment. The uh, swap up didn't come through, and it's not necessarily for the individual play. Save and uh, Zatai have looked completely fine. Vasily getting chased. Oh my god, Kakao just gets destroyed by Cassidy and Caitlyn. That is brutal amount of damage coming out of Hatong's Cassidy, and he's not done yet. Oh my god, Kitty's almost gets two shot as well. Hatong gonna pop his on, his look to go back in as well. Vasily actually just gonna look aggressively forward. Kid there. Gets his Bloodthirster shield popped and Fiji just so aggressive. Carry even split pushing in the top lane. Doesn't care that he doesn't have teleport. Yeah, that was a two-man unit getting a kill on Kakao there in response to four. As even more aggressive play coming through. And yeah, as I said, it's not Zatai or uh, Save that are looking poor. It's the fact that Kakao hasn't looked like he can affect any of their lanes. Yeah, and it might just be you no know, lack of synergy with Rookie. Could just be the team getting used to each other. Keep it. Invictus Gaming have not gotten it together this game, despite starting out reasonably well. Kid especially has played another fairly good game. Yeah, he certainly has. He's played very safe on this hyper carry, making sure that he's putting himself into a position that he can get damage off where possible. But when there's a 4-0-11 Kassadon on the other team and a very fed rumble, it is extremely difficult. How is going in? He actually found, I think it was carry. That was almost the Jarvan Zareth combo for a big long range kill, but not even that's enough to get them a kill on the rumble. Yeah, and Zatai, he's scaling up nicely. He's 360 CS at this point. So we mentioned the difference between Vasily and uh, Kid. The exact same is in reverse in the mid lane. Hatong does have all those kills, I guess, to augment his Lucia Saw, but 
That's a lot of gold at the moment on the mid laner for IG. Yeah, I mean, the tie, unfortunately, just due to all the global gold and the kills, still 2,000 gold down on that Cassidy. And so, uh, Tung looking good here. And Vasily, I have to credit him. He's played a fantastic game on Caitlyn. You know, we looked at him. He was a little shaky in the first week especially, but he's been playing very well the past few days. And this Caitlyn looks deadly. Yeah, and Vasily is such a yo-yo. He goes up and down quicker than any other player I think I've seen. But when he is on point, he is an absolutely devastating marksman. Yeah, and Kid, for all of his incredible CSing, his 50 CS in the hole here against Vasily's Caitlyn. And Caitlyn, might, we might see a bit more of Caitlyn, honestly. If people are going to be picking between the extremes of Sevier and Tristan, I wouldn't be surprised to see Caitlyn punish some people. Yeah, I've actually been waiting for it for a couple of weeks now. The jinxes of Caitlyn's as Goodbye, absolutely kiddies. delete kitties off the map. Um, the tongue just can't be stopped at this point. No, he's just, he's having a field day right now on Kassadin. This is what you dream of when you come into a professional League of Legends game and pick Kassadin. He is unbelievably farmed here. 5 0 11, fed out of his mind. Killing the poor support left and right. Kitties just has no chance. Yeah, and you feel for the sake of a mindset, IG need to just try and throw it down one more time and get something out of a team fight so they have some positivity into the next game because with a 15,000 gold deficit at 40 minutes, it doesn't look like they're going to pull this one off. Yeah, Baron back as well. I think that's two inhibs down as well. Yeah, it is mid and bot gone here, and Vici just never, never letting go of the control they have over this map, taking every objective they can, shutting out IG. Pretty much at every point they can afford to. I actually only have one turret. I just noticed that. And this might be a final bait here to clean out this game. Yeah, and it certainly looks like that is what they're going for. Save looking to go in. Oh, Dandy actually missing that Q there. Does get stunned up as well, but might as well help him. Just flashing in again to tie. Does pop his on his kitty, so he gets kicked back in. That's an amazing equalizer to cut off that choke as well. Now's the tie. Going to get aggressive on, taken out by Carry. Save is trying the best that he can, but that's already three kills. Our Tong is somehow still alive. Kid really wanted to kill him, but now Paul Tristana just going to get cleaned out by Rumble. Yeah, and there's absolutely nothing they can do about that. That's the ace. That'll be the game. And what a shutout by Vici. Coming up absolutely massive. Yeah, Vasily shot save in the head multiple times. Was able to get the last kill. Their own Tanar. So Vici can kind of win at their own leisure. Death time is not that long, actually. 20 seconds left on Kakao. But this should be the end of the game here for Vici. And what a performance here in their first game. Yeah, and across the board, they've just outclassed their respective opponents of IG. IG, this is their first loss of the season, remember? So they need to try and flip a switch to come back in this one. And a great performance by Vici. IG can't quite get it off the ground this particular game. And it's curious to see what happens in game two. I have to say though, despite all of that, I actually love that IG started uh, save and Zatai. They need some play here. Why not play them against a decent team here in Vici? Yeah, you can pull them out against a team that you expect to win against, but these guys need the experience. And that's 44 games that you have to play. Yeah, there certainly is. It is a long season. And subsequently, because of that loss, congratulations to OMG for remaining the only undefeated team in the league. But yeah, going through pick ban, I thought I said to you uh, in the break that I thought that IG's team was just superior across the board. But wow, when you get a Cassidy that far ahead, he can definitely do some work. Yeah, we do have a replay to going from that last game as well. So let's check it out. Yeah, and this is where they trying to set up a gank push. All they wanted to do at this point is get one of the members off, and they couldn't catch Dandy. So if we roll it through, this is IG getting extremely desperate. Kakao tries to engage on Tomata over the wall. Save goes on over with him, and you just see it turns to disaster so quickly. Yeah, I mean, Bubba's coming out. Kitty's playing reasonably well, but there's just so much damage here on Vici's side. Yeah, and save goes for a big ultimate, tries to jump over the wall, but Vasily with that shield on, pops the, uh, uh, the ace in the hole. And you have to say that for a team that has just come together, only played a couple, uh, the four series, that game they looked much more coordina coordinated Vici uh, than they had the season so far. Yeah, stepping up as well. And IG couldn't quite get it together, but we'll see what happens, guys. We'll return with game two.